as you listen to the voice of God, to the word of God, harden not your hearts. Our text for meditation this morning is selected from John's Gospel, chapter 10. We will read verse 1 to 3, and we will skip up to verse 11 to 18. John chapter 10, verse 1 to 3, and then we'll go to 11 up to 18. I'm reading from the New International Version. Very truly I tell you, Pharisees, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate but climbs in by some other way is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Verse 11 to 18. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheepfold. I must bring them also. They too would listen to my voice, and they shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life, only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I received from my father. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. I titled this message, Christ the Good Shepherd. Jesus said, I am the door, I am the gate. And he also said, he is the shepherd. But more specifically, he said, I am the good shepherd. He is not just a shepherd, but he is the good shepherd. And I want us for just a moment to think about this statement. I am the good shepherd. Just reflect on it. Because sitting here this morning, I will ask you this question. Are you worried about anything? Anxious? Is there any fear of something in your heart at all? I just want you, it's a rhetorical question. I want you to think about it. Just reflect on it. Is there anything that you're worried about? Or are you anxious? Or is there anything that Maybe some, from time to time, this fear comes into you, into your heart, into your life, and into your thoughts. If that is the case, then it is good for us, it's good for you, to reflect and think about this image of Christ as being the good shepherd. Think about that. Because what I think is that we Christians become anxious and worried sometimes in life because we do not take time to reflect and rest on Christ as our good shepherd. I really say we Christians 
Because Christ, if we call ourselves Christians, it means Christ is in us. It means we believe in Christ. We are Christ followers. But sometimes we do not even think that Christ is our shepherd. Because if we are truly Christians, the way we live our lives will be a kind of lifestyle that you always reflect and know that you have a shepherd who is a good shepherd. And when I read this uh, metaphor, I am the good shepherd, I quickly thought about Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. The Lord is your shepherd. You will not want. God is telling you, think about that this morning. Are you depending all the times on your own ability and strength? Have you forgotten that the life that you have is from someone? That your life is in his hands? The songwriter says, let your Holy Spirit come and take control. That's what I just sang. I'm having that uh, song we just sang a few minutes ago. Let your Holy Spirit come and take control of every situation that has troubled my mind. All my cares and burdens unto you I roll. What was in the mind of this songwriter? Because he knew that Christ is the good shepherd. And if he rules his burdens to him, he will take over. The word of God is coming to us this morning. Whatever you are anxious about, whatever you are worried about, whatever news you have heard and is boggling your mind, roll it unto Christ, the Good Shepherd, for He knows and understands how to take care of you. I am the Good Shepherd. You know, this word invokes the language of God and the very name of God Himself, because Christ is God in the flesh. He came so that he can live amongst us. He can experience the kind of things that brings us anxiousness. And therefore, he knows what you are going through. Because he has been here. God himself has lived here. He has gone through the things that we are experiencing. And therefore, if you rule them unto him, he wouldn't know. Because he's a good shepherd, he will know where to place you. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, Christ came to gather his sheep and lead them to eternity. He didn't came, come that they should scatter. He came to gather them. Are you one of the sheep that is going astray, who is not listening to the voice of the master? But what makes Jesus the good shepherd? Three things stand out in this text. He knows his sheep. He protects his sheep. And he provides for the sheep. These three things. Christ knows you. You remember what he told Jeremiah? When Jeremiah was complaining. That he's so young. Nobody knows about his own family. And in his family he is the least person. And what did God tell him? I knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. I knew you and I created you for a purpose. And he told Jeremiah, I will be with you all through your life. Place yourself in the place of Jeremiah. He was speaking to Jeremiah at that time. He is speaking to you now. Don't think that you're on your own. Remember that your mother can fail you. Your father will fail you. Your sister can fail you or your brother. Your pastor may fail you. But Christ will never fail you. Because he is the good shepherd. Dear brothers and sisters. You know, can, I, can you play that video for me please? Just a two minutes video. It's a clip, it's not a video. Just want us to watch just two minutes. 
and then our career from there. Thank you. That is Christ for us. He said, my sheep know my voice. I know my sheep. Let's just imagine that in a sheepfold, three or four different shepherds in the evening can bring their sheep in the fold. And they will mix up. The sheep look exactly the same. They are not different. But in the morning, they will go in three or four different folds. There will be no mistake. One will not go into the other fold. Because the sheep know the master's voice. He will call them. Anybody who uses a different voice is a thief. He is not entering through the right gate. We are the sheep of his pasture. Ask yourself, do you know your master's voice? When he calls, can you hear and come to him? We have seen sheep. This is animal. But we, God gave us wisdom, a brain to think and to reason. But we find ourselves wandering away from the fold when this sheep can go in their fold. Think about that. Where are you standing with God? He knows his sheep and his sheep knows him and his voice. That's what Jesus says in verse 3. The sheep hear his voice and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out into the green pasture. The green pasture is there and Christ is calling you because he knows he will go ahead of you to lead you. If you keep thinking that you will do things on your own, forgetting that there is a good shepherd that cares, then you will wander off and you will get lost. Because it's important that the shepherd should know the sheep well and know their conditions. Whether they are lost strain, injured, whether they are weak or in pain. Because the knowledge of each of them allows him to apply the right care on the sheep. He knows which sheep are prone to wander. He knows which sheep are sluggish, which sheep is weak, and treats them more gently. Let Christ know who you are. So that he can treat you according to what you need, according to your need. There's a great comfort in this. 
the better he knows you, the better he will take care of you. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, this morning I want to tell you, Christ knows you. Don't doubt about that. Whatever you've been anxious about or worried about, whatever conflict you have in your mind, you are not on your own. Christ knows you. You know, some of you here may be parents. Some of you may be teachers. The children that you have in your house are the same. And you give them the same love. But you should also know that they are also uniquely different from one another. Even though they are your children, you show them love, the same love. They are also different somehow. Because you can correct one just with your eyes. You can just, they look, it will change. But another one will not even give a fuss on you looking at them. Some are tender. Some are stubborn. Some are hurting. Some never seem to get hurt at all. All of the knowledge that you have about your children allow you to take good care of them. Because I would not be expecting that my son should be behaving exactly like my daughter. Because my daughter is good when I call her, she comes and do things, she asks me about what to do, I will not expect my son to be exactly the same. I need to know this about my children so that I can take good care of them. I can treat them well. If us as human beings know how to give good things to our children, how much more of God our Father, Christ the Good Shepherd, how much more of Him? Dear brothers and sisters, Christ as the Good Shepherd knows His sheep thoroughly. There is nothing about you that He does not know. From the greatest the slightest. From the most obvious that everybody can just see to what you think is the most hidden. He knows it all. You may sit here and think you are hiding something. Oh, I don't want you to know about these things. Be reminded this morning that Christ knows everything about you more than how you know yourself. Because he is the good shepherd. Christ is the good shepherd of this church. He knows every mission that the pastor takes. Before he even has a vision, Christ knows. Christ knows you as a Christian. He knows your contribution in this church. You may sit and be grumbling about the person sitting next to you. But God knows your heart. How many times have you passed your sister without greeting? In the same church. Your brother without talking to him. In the same church. Sometimes some people, you sit, they come and sit next to you, you wake up and sit somewhere else. And we're wondering, what is the problem? And you think nobody knows about it. Christ knows every thought of yours. This morning, what is important is not just believing that Jesus is the good shepherd, but it is believing and knowing that we are weak sheep and we need a good shepherd. That's what is important this morning. Until you believe that you are a sinner. Until you believe that you are weak. You will always see yourself thinking you are able to do it all on your own. You will not ask for help if you don't see yourself that you are weak. You will not go to ask for forgiveness if you don't believe that you are a sinner. Because we are sinners. We are born sinners. The pastor reminded us last Friday about the blind man. That the disciples asked Jesus, 
Whose sin is it? Is it that of this young man or that of the father or the parents? Ask yourself, are you a righteous servant of Christ? Are you a righteous servant of Christ? Do you see Christ that he can get involved in your business or you think you can do it on your own? I'll give you a verse in the Bible that speaks very clearly to all of us. That don't think you can hide anything. Psalms 139 from verse 1 to 4. David cried out to God and this is what he said. O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, behold, O oh Lord, you know it all together. God knows your thoughts. God knows what you are thinking about him. God knows what you are thinking about your brother or your sister. God knows what you are thinking about tomorrow. And that's why he tells you, do you not worry about tomorrow because tomorrow will take care of its own. If you go down to verse 5 and 6 of that very section, it says, You hem me in, behind and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. Can you imagine how God loves you? He, you, he surrounds you with his hands. The songwriter said, You unravel me in my mother's womb. You give me a new song. I pray that Christ will give you a new song this morning. Amen. When you recognize that he is a good shepherd, when you know that your thoughts should be focused onto him, wherever you go, Christ is with you. He surrounds you. He never abandons you on your own because he knows you. He knows that you are weak and that you need the good shepherd like him. That's why he hems you. He gently cares for us and deals with us according to our needs. The Lord knows us better. I hope that you know this. You understand this. I pray that the Spirit of God put, it, put this in your heart and cement it there so that you know that God knows your thoughts and know that he cares for you. Maybe we may be asking this question. How can we be so sure that Jesus is this kind of shepherd? How can we be sure? Because the Bible says so. And I believe that the Bible is true. As the good shepherd, this is what he did. He showed what length he will go to for the eternal protection of his sheep. And what did he say? I lay down my life for the sheep. That is what a good shepherd can do. I remember the pastor asked a question two weeks ago. Um, cannot really recollect, but like who would die for his partner or her partner or something of that nature? Mm -hmm. Who would stand and see a lion coming and then you will, okay, me the husband, my wife is with me and lion is coming. I said, okay, lion, kill me and leave my wife. We'll give, we'll give, we'll give, we'll give the kidney, but who will give the heart? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of a thing. Yeah? There are some challenging things that you will see that you cannot die. You cannot die in the place of somebody you say, I love you, I love you, I love you with the mouth. But when it comes to really showing that love that you stand and take the blow, you will not. But that's what Christ did. The Lord is the good shepherd. Show what love he can go for his sheep, my brothers and sisters. This is the good shepherd who protects the sheep with his very life. He did not mind about heaven. He left the throne of glory and came down here to die in your place. And then, you sit and you think you can have things on your own. Jesus is condemning false prophets, false shepherds, because even today, we also have false shepherds as well. And he calls them thieves and robbers, because they don't come through the gate. The sheep does not know their voice. They come through the back door. 
to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Christ is the good shepherd. He protects his sheep. In this passage, Jesus compares them to a hireling shepherd. And he said, because normally in life, in normal life, a shepherd, if he has so many sheep, he cannot shepherd all of them by himself. He will hire somebody to take care of one of the flock that belongs to him. But if that shepherd sees a wolf coming, he will run for his life. After all, this is not my sheep. Why should I die for? Just for sheep? You rather don't pay me today. Let me run away. You see? But that's not what our God is. He says he's a good shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep. He dies for them because they are his. So I'm reminding you this morning, you are his. You are God's child. And therefore, you are no longer a slave to fear because you are a child of God. Let this sink into our hearts and minds that I wake up every morning with the confidence that my Father is watching me. He is with me when I'm going out and when I'm coming in. He is with me when I'm sleeping and when I'm awake. He is with you all the time. Because God is not man that he should lie. He promised that he will never forsake you or leave you on your own. And therefore, that promise is assured. I am a good shepherd. The good shepherd protects his sheep. This is what makes him the good shepherd. Above all else, he willingly dies for his sheep to protect them. Because if he did not die, we will not have that blood that is covering us. Because on the cross of Calvary, that blood was shed to cover us. So that when the weapons of the enemy are coming, that will be a shield. They will not see us because Christ is covering us. He's covering us even from our sins. That when God looks down, he sees his son. He doesn't see you and your sins. And therefore, have that confidence that you have someone that loves you. Make no mistake. It was not his knowledge of what he needed and his willingness to meet that need that led to his death. This was no accident death. Jesus says in both verses 11 and 14 as we read, I lay down my life. A shepherd may be willing to sacrifice. Okay? A shepherd may be willing but may not actually do it in the end when the time comes. You may sit here and you're willing. Oh, I will die for this person. I will do this. But when the time comes, you cannot do it. But you know what? Jesus was willing, not only willing, he was planning and pursuing it to die for the sheep. Can you see here? The shepherd we just saw there, the sheep serve the shepherd because he is farming the sheep to sell, make money. To do, you know what? To meet up some of his needs. But in this sense, the shepherd served the sheep. Because Christ died for you. Instead of us, we are the sheep and he is the shepherd and he died for us. He served us. I mean, this talk, when this talk came to my mind this morning, I could not really contain it. Imagine that Christ dying in your place. Who deserve to die really? Us. Us. The sinners. Do you know why he died? Because the joy that was before him, he chose to endure the cross. The joy of seeing you safe. The joy of seeing you go to have your salvation. That is what was important to him. And that's what we call a good shepherd. And the third and the last is the good shepherd provides for his sheep. Think, again, think of the last verse of Psalms 23. 
The context is that the Lord is our shepherd. Now, that final statement begins with this. Surely, surely, the last sentence in Psalms 23, surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life and you shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That word surely gives a guarantee. That means Christ is giving you a guarantee that goodness and mercy will follow you. So you don't need to have any doubt if Christ will bless you or not. He's saying to you, blessings, forgiveness, mercy, they shall be your possession. And I pray that you receive it with an open heart, an open mind, and with a humble heart. Because pride will make you miss your blessing. Do you think that he just doesn't know what you need? You are anxious, you're worried. Do you think Christ doesn't know what you need? Or do you think that he can't provide that what you need? Or you think that he's ignorant? Whatever it is, all the times we begin to worry and we fret. And this is why the scripture speaks so many times about not being anxious. Remember Jesus gives us so many object lessons along this line. When he was giving a sermon on the mount to the people, the Bible says that they lay down in the grass and they were receiving the word that he was giving them. At some point, the disciples, they began to worry. And they came up to Jesus. Master, what are we going to? Where will we have food to feed these 5,000 people? They were worried. Maybe we should send them home. And what did Christ do? He said, do not worry. And he fed them. And then, another day, he was still preaching on the mount again. The people were lying in the green pasture, receiving the word from him. Yet again, the disciples were worried. Where will we have food to feed these 4,000 people? Can you imagine? Can you just think about it for a moment? How easy it is for the moment to forget the goodness of Christ, what Christ has done for you before. Is there any person sitting here today that can tell me that you don't have a testimony of God's goodness in your life? Is there any reason for you to worry so much and think that the matter that you're going through now is too much for God. I want us to think about this. Is there, is it a different God? Is the same God that delivered you yesterday? Is it the same God that provided for you yesterday? The same God that protected you yesterday? The same God that gave you the breath that you've been breathing in the last hour? It's the same God that will give that breath today. Why worry? Yes, I say these things. I know we are all flesh. We are humans. And when things happen, we worry. I'm not saying that we are immune to worry. Don't think that I, can't, I don't worry. I worry. But how do you handle that worry when it comes? Do you say, do you know you can speak to your worriness? You can speak to your worries and tell them, I will not worry. I will not let this bog me down. Because I know that God is my shepherd. Amen. Keep going. Because he provides. Amen. To conclude, I want to tell all, all of us that the Lord knows what you need more than you do. He really does. Do not worry. If worry comes, pray. Because our prayer is our telephone to our God. 
Sometimes when I read my Bible and I face difficulties, I pick the phone and I call the pastor for him to guide me. We don't have that kind of phone to heaven. But we have our prayer, which is your phone to call God to intervene in the circumstances that you are going through. Because he has promised you that goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. He is not lying. He is not man that he should lie. He is not man that he should tell you that he will give goodness to you, but will give you misery. Sometimes when misery comes, we should think very carefully why we are going through what we are going through. Because it's a promise that evidence in his great provision, in sacrificing himself for us, he provides for us now and he will provide tomorrow and forever. Amen. It's good to remind ourselves of that. Do you allow yourself to rest at his feet? Do you know him as the good shepherd who knows you through and through and yet still loves you? He knows you that you are a sinner. He knows you that you are stubborn. He knows that you read the Bible, it enters here and comes out there. That you listen to his voice and you ignore even when you are doing something and you have that prompt in your mind, you ignore that prompt, you carry on. Because the word of God lives in you. The spirit of God will be speaking to you when you want to do something wrong. But you will ignore, you stubbornly ignore it. And God knows that you are stubborn, but he still loves you. And he still gave his life on the cross for you. He will not abandon you on the way. If you are standing in the middle of the water today, know that God will hold you cross because he says that when you are up in the mountain I'm there when you are in the valley I'm there when you are in the sea whatever circumstances and wherever you are Christ is with you Amen. dear brothers and sisters you can rest you can lay down in green pastures as he will restore your soul the things that the enemy has stolen from you God will restore every bit of it. Amen. Because he is a restorer. And he will only do it if you humble yourself and cry out to him and say, here I am, Lord. Take me. Search me like David cried out to him. And know me. Mold me the way you want me to be. I have gone astray. I don't hear your voice anymore. And you make the effort don't sit and sleep. As the brother was saying, you have to make the effort. He is a good shepherd. And his voice is worth listening to. And he is worth following. Amen. Amen. Amen.